The Small Business Big Marketing Show is made possible thanks to 52ways.biz. That's the numbers 52. And it's a free one-day live event hosted by small business marketing expert Dale Beaumont for business owners who want more leads, more time, more profit. And you can grab your free tickets over at 52ways.biz before it is too late because there's only so many seats. And we're also brought to you by Cornerstone, an Aussie-owned family-run offshoring business based in the Philippines who can reduce your running costs by, wait for it, 70%, 7-0. Book a free feasibility assessment with David Warren by calling 029083-6689 or visit cornerstonebusinesssolutions.com.au. Understanding your customers at a deep level makes sense, right? What excites them, what keeps them up at night, what annoys them? All good questions to ask, but it's amazing how many business owners don't answer these questions. Well, today's guest has, and it's resulted in a solid brand with 20,000 members in just two years. Well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show, where successful small business owners share their souls to take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back to the Small Business Big Marketing Show. I am your host, Timbo Reed. But you, so much more importantly, are a motivated business owner and you are ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. It's exactly what we do around here. It's what we've been doing for 358 shows so far. If it's your first time around, welcome. If it's your, you know, 280th time around, love your work. Big show today, Justin Hales, founder of Camplify, think Airbnb for caravans, joins us to explain how getting clear on your customers' personas is a game changer. Resident tech expert and small business guru Dale Beaumont drops in to share a productivity tool. I've got another low-cost marketing idea. We go back into the archives to visit an episode I did with celebrity personal trainer Michelle Bridges. As per usual, team, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Hey, do you reckon you've got a book in you? I think you do. Could be a fictional book, you know, like (laughs) Fifty Shades of Grey type novel, or it could be factual, in which you share that mountain of knowledge you are standing on, like I've done with the boomerang effect. Whatever it's about, having a book in your marketing arsenal is an absolute game changer. Glorified business card, as I keep saying. Rightly or wrongly, having a book positions you as an industry expert. Now, I would love to see you write a book as a business owner. Doesn't need to be a 50,000 word epic. Could be a 12-page e-book, could be a 40-page booklet. Just something of substance that you can hand over to a prospect and watch them go, wow! To help you do that, I hosted a webinar last week with past guest Darren Finkelstein, aka The Boat Guy, who's written not one, but three books on buying, selling, and enjoying boating. And what they've done for his business and personal brand is off the charts. So in this webinar, Darren takes us through his 10 key steps to writing and self-publishing your first book. Here he is talking about how to break through one key blockage many would-be authors have. It's really important to talk about intellectual property here, I reckon. A lot of people, and I was one of those, who thought, oh, when, I, when I thought about writing a book at the beginning and, and giving away all those tips, those advice, those ideas that I have that really separate me from my opposition, I'm giving away into my intellectual property. And I thought to myself, fuck that, I'm not doing that. Oh, these people want my intellectual property, they pay to play. They give me a sum of money for my consultation or my services and I share them with that knowledge. And I think that's really the wrong way to go about the exercise. And probably the best example I've got of sharing intellectual property because the return on it just uh, accelerates itself, just uh, compounds itself, just um, is a snowball effect, is uh, Jamie Oliver. 
He's on every TV show. He is quoted everywhere in the press. You see him cooking up a storm on, you know, every Foxtel channel, every free-to-air channel. He's everywhere. He gives away every one of his recipes when he does that exercise. You know, when he tells you how to make the, the world's best fish and chips, you know, there's the recipe he's giving away. Well, you know what? He gives away more intellectual property than, than anybody else I know. And it comes back to him in spades because people are still interested in what he has to say. People are still paying for his cookbooks. People are still paying for his seminars. They're paying to buy the Tefal bloody saucepans that he endorses. He is just building that leverage of that profile as being the expert in the field. So my attitude changed pretty quickly when I thought about all that. Couldn't agree more, Daz. Now, this was an exclusive 70-minute webinar for members of the Small Business Big Marketing Club. So if you'd like access to the full recording, and it's an absolute ripper, plus there's mountains of other marketing gold inside the club, then head over to crankmymarketing.com and you'll be a member in under a minute. (sighs) Life just got a whole lot easier. Hi, Dale Beaumont here from 52ways.biz, the best one-day business workshop ever, with another productivity tool to make your business life a whole lot easier. So what is the tool that we have for you today? Well, it is called Flipboard. And think of Flipboard like your own personal newspaper or magazine. So basically, you download an app, which is free, and it's available to all Apple and Android users. And what happens is you then type in all the different keywords about the things you want to know about. You can also subscribe to blogs, you can subscribe to newspapers and digital magazines from around the world. All of that comes into one central place, and what you can then do is flip your finger and you can consume dozens of articles within the space of just a few minutes. Now, what you can then do is read them in there, or you can save them for consumption later on. Think of it like your own digital newspaper, delivered to you each and every day. It's a fantastic tool, and it's free. There you go. I told you life would get a whole lot easier, so check it out today. This has been Dale Beaumont from 52ways.biz. Now, back to you, Timbo. (sighs) Life just got a whole lot easier. Thanks, buddy. Now, as you know, one of my ongoing mantras for business owners of any size is to never stop learning. So I encourage you to get along to one of Dale's live events. Absolutely first class they are. Tickets are free and it's eight hours of solid business building content. In fact, in eight hours, Dale shares 52 ways to boost your profits. That's probably where the name 52 ways came from. Grab your free seats now. Take a friend at 52, the number 52 ways.biz. Coming up after today's interview, I will share another low-cost marketing idea that you can implement immediately, plus we hear from past guest Michelle Bridges. Okay, today's successful business owner is Justin Hales, and he's the founder of Camplify, which is kind of like the Airbnb for caravans and RVs. He's also another cubicle escapee, gotta love the cubicle escapees, who's now living the dream, running his own business. How's this? In just two years, Camplify has a valuation nearing eight figures and is about to enter enter the UK and German markets. One of the keys to Camplify's success has been getting absolutely crystal clear on who their customers are. So we talk a lot about how and why all businesses should go through that process. Plus, we geek out over automation funnels, customer experience, and Justin, I think, has a great view on competition. I started off by challenging Justin on his voicemail message. Your voicemail says, really do you check it, so please leave a text instead. (laughs) Exactly right. How's that working for you? It's working very well. People, you know, get back to me very quickly uh, through a text message and I can reply really quickly to them. Really? There's a very yeah. heated there's a very heated discussion going on inside the small business big marketing forum about that exact way of handling voicemail because uh, if you're driving it's a pain in the ass. It is it is but um, I, luckily I live in uh, in Newcastle so literally it takes me about 12 minutes to get from my home to the office. Right. 
So I don't spend too much time in the car, which is great. Good on you, mate. All right, we're not here to talk about your voicemail etiquette. Tell us about Camplify. Where'd the idea come from? Yeah, so it was about uh, November 2014 that uh, my wife and I were out going for a walk around our suburb and she said to me, it'd be great to go away on a caravanning holiday for Christmas. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. We, we hadn't really been on that type of holiday before. Um, as a kid, I'd been on loads of caravanning holidays. We kind of did that every single school holidays with my parents and our extended family. And I tried to find something to book, and there was just nothing, no options, no available thing for me to, to be able to book. So um, I started thinking, well, you know, there, there must be a problem there. There must be other kinds of people that are like myself and my wife that want to do this but don't have access to it. And then about uh, a month later, um, the NRMA uh, had a call out uh, so the National Roads and Motoring Association looking for innovative ideas that um, were around some key themes that their customers were looking for that they could support. So I came up with the idea that, you know, really it would be great to be able to solve that problem um, by connecting people like the people that live in my suburb that have, uh, you know, hundreds of caravans that just sit there every day pretty much. Uh, and people like myself who would love to be able to take one away on a holiday. <laughs> Just like that. Here you are like having a walk with your missus and you, you you identify a problem that you've got, you assume others have got it, and Camplify is born. What, what were you doing, Justin, before this idea came to you? So I was working for a uh, mining supply chain logistics <laughs> management software company. Woo! Yes, uh, yeah, exciting <laughs> stuff. So... Uh, we basically helped customers use software to um, track the commodity from when it was uh, drilled out of the ground. So, sorry, sorry, what were you saying? Exactly. <laughs> so you, we, you obviously were looking for for a new kind of beginning. Was that fair? Uh, yeah, I, I was kind of, you know, our business has gone through a few transformations. We've been bought a couple of times. Right. Um, so, you know, it was the time when I was thinking, you know, what, it'd be great to go out and do something by myself. Um, Good on you, mate. I, yeah, I really admire okay. people. I really admire people who do this. Did, I have to ask: Did you have a, a bit of a runway, a bit of a bit of um, financial safety net? Because there's a lot of people listening with a lot of ideas, but often can't do it because of lack of resources. Yeah, so there's a couple of things, I guess, um, from our point of view. Literally, because the idea happened so quickly, and we got into the into the NRMA program, uh, we got. Uh, 30k to start the business straight away from from the program, so that was good. Um, but also, um, you know, it was the time when the mining industry was going through a downturn, yeah, um, right. and so I was lucky enough to go to my company and say, you know what, if, if anyone's looking, if you're thinking about doing making any redundant, any people redundant, um, me, me, I'll put I'll put my hand up. So that was good. That's unreal, mate. So this this NRA NRMA program was sort of like was it an innovation incubator type thing that allowed you to bring ideas to life around automotive? Yeah, exactly. So it was run by a company called Slingshot. Uh, so they're a business incubator. Uh, they've launched about uh, two hundred businesses in Australia through great the Slingshot name. program. Great um, name. Yeah, great name. So uh, they, they basically help you to um, understand your product, your customers, your market. Um, and it's almost like doing a 12-week MBA specifically on your business and your customers. Mate, that uh, is unreal. So you walk into day one at Slingshot with an idea, and the idea is, well, you, you explain the idea in its simplest form. So it's basically um, a really easy concept. It's just people who have caravans, motorhomes, camper trailers, camper vans, who don't use them all the time. We connected with people who would like to hire them and go away, away on a holiday. It's just like Airbnb, but for, for all those types of RVs. So, so uh, you then go into Slingshot Day One, and and what's twelve week MBA? What's the kind of top three things that they say? Do these, and you give your char- you give yourself the greatest chance of success. Probably the most important thing is you've got to know your customer. Right. So you, you have to know. Uh, why a customer wants this type of service, um, that there is, in fact, a need for this, um, and that customers will, once you provide this service in the right way, uh, that they will actually come along and consume your product. 
Um, so that's probably the first thing you have to know. Okay. Um, Hold the thought around customers. I want to go quite deep in that to sort of understand how you've identified your customers. But what about validation of the idea? I mean, I, I hear you tell me, Camplify, yeah, Airbnb for caravans. Seems like a good idea. But but there's a lot of kind of good ideas out there, I say, with quotation marks. How do you validate yeah. it? Yeah, so obviously we've got two sides of the marketplace. So we've got uh, people who own and people who want to hire. So... The, validating the idea behind someone who wants to hire was quite easy because all we really need to do was build a, a website telling people that this is a concept coming along, yep. uh, put some AdWords up, uh, put some Facebook advertising and tell people register so that you can you can be informed when there's one available that suits your needs. So we did that mm-hmm. and basically we got thousands and thousands of people sign up and say, we would like to do this. I'd love to hire a van. Don't want yep. to buy one, just want to hire one for a couple of nights. Tick. Exactly. So we validated that side of the business. And can I just yeah. ask, you got uh, you got the website up, didn't spend a yep. lot of money, I'm guessing, just kind of like a website that presented the idea in its simplest form and asked for people's email, right? Literally, I did it myself <laughs> in about three hours. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, so the uh, second so side of that, it? So the second side was a little bit harder. So we had to find people who owned vans, uh, we had to tell them the concept, and then we had to see whether they would be interested in doing it. So... To do that, you've got to go where, where put, there are people that have vans. So we literally went out into caravan parks, we went to caravan camping shows, we went to you name it where you could find someone who owned a van, and we started to survey people and say, uh, is this something you would consider doing? Okay. That would take a little bit more time. Yes, a little bit more time. Lots of, uh, lots of knockbacks, but, but, you know, a few people along the way that said, yes, we would, but we need the following thing. So right. we were able to find out those, those things that our customers needed and, and be able to really address them. So, so, Justin, in doing that, you know, like when you, ask, when you tell people about an idea, they're generally inclined to say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'd probably do that. It's a, yep. bit, it's a bit dangerous to rely on that, isn't it? How do, you, how do you get past the, yeah, but what if push came to shove and it was time to actually rent your van out? How do you get them to that point? Yeah, well, the next, the next step in that is, great, can I have your email address and your phone number so I can tell you about it when it's ready? <laughs> so, so once you've got that and they say, actually, yes, you can have my details, then not all of those people are going to convert, but, but a lot of them will. Right. So uh, tell us about the point then that you're sitting in uh, the slingshot and you've gone, yep. yeah, it's validated. How did you know? Yeah, so we, we'd gone to lots of these types of events. Uh, we'd collected lots of names and signatures, uh, uh, names and email addresses, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we'd, we'd uh, got people that were really interested in it. And then we started to contact them saying, uh, look, we're thinking about launching on this date. Um, you know, are, are you in if we do this? And uh, lots of people said yes, and we knew that, okay, we're, we're on to a winner here. Right. Are you, are you loving it? Are you, are you just loving sitting in this incubator, having escaped the corporate cubicle? Yeah, look, it was so, so different. You know, we went, went into it not really knowing what to expect, not yep. really knowing even if our business was going to work, to be honest with you. Yep. Um, but just thinking this is a, a great opportunity to give something a go and really have a great position to be in with around us with experts, with people that... No, no, no um, small business and uh, digital marketing and all that kind of thing inside and out. So we've just got to go hell for leather for it. Yeah, totally. Did, did you go, did you just literally lean into it completely or was there an element, uh, maybe yourself, maybe your wife, maybe someone else sort of sitting on your shoulder going, be careful, Justin, this might not work. Yeah, well, you know, you always have those thoughts. I still have those thoughts today. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Look at our numbers and think, you know, yeah. we've had amazing growth and, you know, fantastic results, but, you know, you still, every now and again, you think, oh, is this thing really going to work? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I think every, uh, I don't think there's a business owner out there that at some point doesn't, you know, question themselves and, uh, you know, uh, I spoke to uh, the fellow who started Stone and Wood Brewery up in Byron Bay, you know, he's doing $60 million a year of beer and he still wonders whether it's going to work or not, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. I, I, okay, so... Um, you're working in 12 weeks in Slingshot. Um, tell us about understanding your, your people. Because you've got two, again, you've got two audiences to understand. You've got to intimately understand the caravan owner and then you've got to understand the person who, the holiday maker, I guess, is what you call them, right? Exactly. So, That's so, right, yeah. so, so what's the process? 
Yeah, so we, we very uh, early on established that what we needed was some customer personas. And, you know, customer personas are not a new thing. Um, they've been around for a long time. Advertising agencies have used them for it a huge uh, number of years mm -hmm. to really um, define down what the marketing strategy was going to be. But a lot of small businesses don't use them. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that they are one of the most valuable tools in actually uh, knowing that you've got a product that your customers wow. are going to, to need. So what is a customer persona and how do you fight, how do you identify it? Yeah, so you know, everybody's heard the old rule that you get 80% uh, of your profits from 20% of your customers. Mm -hmm. So uh, really what your customer persona is saying that, you know what, I want to make sure that I understand who those 20% are. I understand in detail that person. I know uh, what, how they think, uh, what they do, and ultimately I know how to get more of those customers. So um, it's about creating um, a profile of that person um, and knowing every single thing you could ever know about that person. So, um, you know, you start off by giving that person a name. So you yeah, might... Right. Uh, you know, call that person for Camplify, you might call him uh, Luke, uh, the owner Luke. And so then you say, well, uh, how old's Luke? So Luke is, you know, usually between, say, 36 to 42. Um, he's got a young family, a couple of kids. Um, he's probably a small business owner. Um, he watches TV for a certain number of hours a week. Uh, he goes on social media for a certain number of hours a week. Um, you know, he's educated, um, he loves caravanning, he loves camping, um, but because he's a small business owner, he knows that uh, spending $50,000 on a caravan, while it satisfies a deep love that he has for, for, for doing this, and he wants to be able to take his kids away on it, and he really wants to own a caravan, at some point he's thinking, is this a good investment? So, so, so Justin, just, just, just to interrupt, are you making this up as, are you painting this picture as, like, is Luke your ideal customer or you know that all the Lukes out there are going to love Camplify? Are you, what's the process? Do you... Yes, yeah, so it's a little bit of both. Um, we know that um, he's our ideal customer, but we also know that every time we speak to somebody that is similar to Luke in, right. that, in that customer persona. We know what their hot buttons are going to be. Okay. We and know the questions they're going to ask. We know we have the answers for them, um, and we know that they're going to become a, a great customer of ours. And is it okay to have a number of customer personas? Absolutely. So you, you might have, you know, you might have ten, um, but really it's about about defining down those ten so that you can say these people generally will fit into one of these 10 categories. Okay, so let's say you've got 10... Uh, Camplify's got 10 customer personas, and, and I'm sure there's a vast difference between number one and number 10. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you have to create one website, one brochure, one one core marketing message that that speaks to every single one of those? Is that is that how it works? Yeah, broadly, so you do, but, but also, um, you know, these days with uh, digital marketing and websites the way they are. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, you can tailor different pages and uh, different messages and different emails and uh, everything to, to that particular audience. So if you're, if you're going out there advertising, let's say right. you want to advertise in a seniors magazine and you know that uh, part of your market is uh, seniors that will read that particular magazine. So you want to create a message specifically for that type of customer who's reading that magazine. So not everyone that reads that magazine is going to be right for you, mm -hmm. but a certain segment of those that readership will be. So right. tailoring your message to that particular audience mm -hmm. and then creating a landing page that directs those people to that to that landing page based on a call to action inside that, love it, that mate. advertisement. See, I love that. And I think a lot of small businesses get two things wrong now. One is they don't do enough work on their customer persona. The second one is, you know, being able to target a marketing message and then direct someone online to a landing page that continues to talk to them in their language, recognises their problems, you know, that's when marketing really kicks in, right? Because it becomes very, Absolutely. very personal. That's right. And then the next step is to, you know, have a marketing automation funnel where where people, uh, you know, fill out a form to get some more information um, and then start to get some emails from you that are once again tailored to that particular landing page that those people have come from. Just give us a bit more insight into that marketing automation funnel. 
Yeah, so we use a great product called uh, Autopilot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an uh, Australian uh, developed product that uh, is now based in uh, Silicon Valley. Um, of and course. Through, through that, you can um, essentially create what's called a customer journey. So you can look at the point in time from where a customer first gets in contact with you through filling out some sort of form or uh, maybe it's through calling you or however it may be. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can start to communicate with them uh, automatically through emails or text messages or uh, you know even hard mail. Um, yeah. And then you can look at how the, if, does the customer activate along that along that process and if they don't what do you want to do so you know a little bit like using a, a Visio workflow diagram uh, it's creating mm -hmm. uh, you know if the customer does this do something if they don't do something else yeah right uh, who does all that for you because that's that's advanced marketing right there do you have writers and kind of autopilot technicians that set all that up uh, well most of it we've done ourselves um, wow we we have um, drawn on experts where we need them, but we've really made sure that we've looked at all the products that are out there and said, what's the easiest one for us to use that's going to have, us have the best support? And that's why we chose Autopilot, because they have a really good online program where you can go and do some training. They make it really easy. But then they also have a system where you put in what you think that the the uh, program should look like in terms of the customer journey and ask them to review it and they give you suggestions. Oh, wow. Matt, that, yeah, there's someone right. at the other end, a real human being. Yeah. This is extraordinary. Yeah. Extraordinary. Uh, listeners, I'm talking to Justin Hales, who is the founder of Camplify, a place where holidaymakers can find RVs and RV owners can hire them out, the Airbnb of, of camping, if you like. Justin, can you wrap some numbers around where the business is at uh, as of, like, what, two years on? Yeah, so uh, just to give you a, a little bit of perspective, I guess. So um, December is, you know, one of probably our busiest time of the year in terms of, you know, everyone wants to go away on a Christmas holiday. Yep. Uh, so uh, December uh, 2015, we mm -hmm. had 90 listings on the site. Uh, December 2016, we're up to, we're up at 1,400 listings mm -hmm. um, and growing at, you know, 120 to 150 a month. Um so huge growth in terms of our listings. Um, we've where, got, where do you think uh, that growth came from? Is it word of mouth or are you actively uh, going out to camping shows and enlisting people? Yeah, look, it's a combination of many different forms of, of marketing. So, um, you know, whether it be uh, digital marketing, uh, getting out there on the ground and talking to people, uh, you know, some PR, mm -hmm. you know, a whole range of different things. So it's really we want people to understand the concept and to be uh, at a barbecue on the weekend and say to, to their friend, oh, I noticed you've got a caravan. Have you heard of this thing called Campify? This is what you can do with it. You're a bloke from a mining company who wasn't a marketer. Now you are, well, well I think we're all marketers actually, but you weren't the yeah. marketing bloke at the mining company. You no. have got a beautifully designed website. You've got a great two-minute video that explains all this. You've put a lot of effort into design. Even the name Camplify reeks of a bit of kind of a hipsternish. Hipsternish, is that a word? <laughs> um, yeah. You, you, you've brought people in. You've kind of found a newfound part of yourself. How's all this come about? Yeah, look, I think it's a combination of all those things. I think that um, <clears throat> for me it, it was around... Um, bringing a, a bit of a corporate mentality to a small business. So <laughs> um, I, I know that, that doesn't sound good, but, but uh, I think there are some things that corporates do well. They really, um, they really long trade lunches. on their brand. Right. Yeah, long, yeah, lunches are great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, they trade on their brand. Um, they, they build strength behind that. Um, they're very consistent with their messaging, uh, and they don't change the boat unless there's a real need to change that direction yeah so and i think that a lot of small businesses can get caught up in um where's my next dollar coming from i need to go and service that customer or the next customer or you know just chase chase the dollar instead of actually saying you know what i know my my product is right because i validated it yep i know the customers because i've built my personas so now it's about building my branding my messaging wow. and the product yes 
Yeah, I totally agree with that, but hard for the small business owner listening who hasn't done that grunt work around building that emotional attachment about understanding their buyer personas. Um, you know, not much use talking, looking at them in the eye and saying, hey, be a bit more consistent and stick to what you're doing because, you know, the next dollar does need to come in the door tomorrow. So what, what yeah, do you say to them? It is, diff- it is difficult, um, but I, I think that... Um then you always need to stay true to your your, your single product, um, and you know you might vary left and right a little bit to be yep. able to service that customer. But at the end of the day, you know if you, if your product is right and you understand your customers, uh, those, those customers will buy from you. Yep. Tell me, I, I, I didn't finish getting the, the numbers around Camplify. So you're onboarding about 120 uh, RV owners a month now, 90 to 120. Yeah. Um, yep. how, how many? Give us some other. Just put some other stats around it. Can you talk revenue? Can you talk days rental? I don't know staff. Yeah, so we're, we're, we've got about uh, 20 or over 20,000 hiring members now as well. Um, and our our owners are getting you know between uh, eighty to one hundred and twenty nights a year booked. Um, obviously, that depends on the RV and the location, but um, you know they're getting a significant number of nights booked per RV at an average of you know between uh, sort of sixty five to one hundred and one hundred and ten dollars a night. So um, you know they're getting some significant. Um, uh, revenue in each owner, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I think we saw at Christmas time this year that the average time from listing to booking, which is what we look at um, regularly, uh, was about four minutes. So wow. someone lists and within four minutes they've got a booking. Hang on, let me understand that. I've got a caravan, I find Camplify, I list it on Camplify, and on average within four minutes I've made my first, I've, I've made my first dollar? That was a Christmas time, yeah. Uh, Christmas time. That's that's really good. How, what's that look yeah. like, sort of uh, now? Or what are we yeah, in uh, it, March? Yeah, it depends on the season. So right yeah, now, right. leading into Easter, um, you know, that's probably going to get pretty close again. Yeah. Um, but um, you know, yeah, it just depends on on when it's what season we're in in terms of. Uh, uh, demand. One of the things, we, Camplify, is at risk of what franchise is is it franchisees are at risk of, which is. One person has a bad experience with one RV owner, you know, the RV's dirty or it doesn't roll up on time or whatever happens, yep. and then it tarnishes Camplify for the rest of us. How yep. do you manage to ensure that your RV owners provide a consistent experience? Yeah, so there's a couple of things. I think um, first and foremost, uh, that's the whole reason that Camplify actually exists because you know, we're, we're enabling the connection between two private parties. So to have an independent arbitrator between those two parties is really important uh, so that we can make sure that both of our customers are protected. Mm-hmm. And if a hirer does have a, a problem, um, then they know they can always come back to us and, and we're there to help them uh, and, and be that, um, that independent party between the two people to make sure that it is a fair system. So I think from that point of view, and that's, a, that's an advantage um, to us. Mm-hmm. The other, other things are that we you know, take time to um, try and onboard all of our owners and talk to them and make sure they understand that uh, they're providing a service uh, and that they have some responsibilities in providing that, that service, the same as any small business does. Uh, and you know, they need to provide a, a good product. They need to make sure that their photos are accurate. Uh, if we need to send out a photographer, we'll do that. Um, they need to make sure their descriptions are accurate. Um, they need to make sure that uh, they're fully insured and we can help them if they need that insurance. Uh, they need to make sure that uh, they've had safety checks on their van and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, how, how do you, there's a whole lot of uh, paperwork you could give them, but do you sit down with each owner? Do you have a phone call? Is there a webinar that happens weekly? Yeah, we have a phone call pretty much with, uh, with everybody that lists wow. uh, at some point. Um, that might be when they get their first booking. Uh, it might be uh, when they first join the platform or before they join the platform. So, you know, we, we spend a lot of the time uh, with our team on the phone talking to those those people and for them to understand that um, there is some responsibilities around, you know, making some income from your, from your RV. But, mm-hmm. you know, really it's just about providing a good price for your customers. What's been the hardest part of bringing all this to life, Justin? Oh, look, I think just that, 
keeping up with the fast moving change in the business. Uh, so, you know, although, you know, talking about the growth numbers that we've had is uh, fantastic, mm-hmm. it also provides challenges around uh, team and support mm-hmm. and processes and, uh, you know, just making sure that you can service your customers. So, um, you know, for us, that's been uh, the biggest challenge, but I think we're doing a pretty good job at the moment. It's a great problem to have. Um, you know, yeah. But how do you scale for growth? Do you, do you, is there a tap that you can turn on and off where you say, you know, no more owners for the next two months or is that you don't want to do that? How, how, do, you, how do you manage growth? Yeah, so we certainly can do that with our customers. So in terms of uh, our advertising, so we can say mm-hmm. to our, our digital marketing expert, okay, let's just turn the, turn the tap off for a little bit. Um, but for us, it's about um, we're trying to build a scalable business that can go anywhere in the world. So mm-hmm. it's about providing a systemised approach that we can try and do as much automation as possible so that we can spend the bulk of our time talking to our customers. So... Yeah. Um, everything that we can do from, you know, accounting systems to, um, uh, you know, anything with IT, uh, anything that we can do that doesn't really uh, add to the direct focus of talking to those customers, yes. we try to automate as much as possible. Tell me more about that. Uh, boring, systems are boring, but boy, oh boy, they are important. How, how, do you, what, what, how do you document every system? Is there a process for that? There is, yeah. So we, we have a, an, an online um, uh, platform that uh, we use a product called Confluence from, uh, from Atlassian, uh, and we document everything that we do. So pretty much uh, when someone comes up with a new idea or a new business process, then we map it out uh, on a whiteboard. Uh, we work out whether that's going to work or not. Uh, we do it manually for a week uh, to see what, whether it does work. If it doesn't work, then we change it. If it does work, then we say, okay, what what are the points in this process that we can automate in some way? Mm-hmm. Uh, we get our developer developers involved. Uh, we get our um, uh, our customer service team involved, and we say, okay, what can we do to provide some automation? And we try to automate as much of that as possible. And we document every every step in the yeah, process wow. to make sure that it's. You know, again, something many small businesses don't do, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I have an interest in an outsourcing business in the Philippines called Cornerstone, and one of the things that they do when you hire a VA through them, a virtual assistant, is that virtual assistant uses a product called, uh, what is it called? It is called, oh, it's a system hub. And okay. they're responsible for documenting every system of a small business because I don't think enough get the fact that if you can systemise something, it removes you from the equation and you can go and focus on what you're good at, right? Exactly right, yeah. And I think that you know, as you scale and grow and you look to bring on your team members, for them to be able to say, okay, here's how we do all these things and yeah. this why, uh, it's so important. Unreal. Tell me, you talk about you as being the Airbnb um, of RV hire. Do you sort of daily delve into the Airbnb side or weekly and kind of figure out what they're doing? Because they're doing all the research. Yeah, look, we, we spend a lot of time uh, in uh, peer-to-peer uh, sharing businesses on, on a whole. So uh, we're part of a, a network in Sydney that is around about uh, 15 businesses yep. that are all peer-to-peer. Uh, so we spend a lot of time with all those guys just talking about what are you doing, what are you finding, what's working, what's not working. Uh, you know, we look at the likes of Airbnb or, or Uber. Uh, every t- everywhere I go uh, in terms of travel, I try to use some sort of sharing economy business so that I can yep. I can get some tips and see how I can, I can uh, improve our platform. Do you think we're just seeing the start of this sharing economy? Absolutely. I think that it's really just the tip of the iceberg. You know, I think who, who, sh- have... who should be scared? Well, I think that there's a lot of uh, traditional businesses out there that have um, taken their customers for granted a, a long, for a long time. Uh, and I think that um, the sharing economy just enables people in, in a neighbourhood to do business together. Mm. And I think that, that really that, in essence, is, is small business. And, you know, we're able to uh, take away the need to have huge um, uh, multinational corporates that mm-hmm. are providing things for us that we can provide to each other. Do you, uh, a lot of the sharing uh, economy businesses that we see are national, if not global in nature. Do you see opportunities for businesses to work at a neighbourhood level? 
and and make a reasonable income? Yeah, I do absolutely. I think that uh, you know, really, that um, there's so many uh, products out there that that work in that that environment. So uh, there's a, a one of the companies in the group that I was mentioning before uh, is called Spacer, and they're a a peer-to-peer yeah, storage. Yeah. We've had him on. So, He's a part, oh, great. Yeah, past guest. He does like driveways and uh, self-storage at people's homes. Yeah. So that's that's a great example of a, a localized, um, you know, peering, a peer-to-peer sharing economy business where you know you've got people that are doing transactions wholly and solely in a local environment. It was a great business, or well, is a great business. You uh, you've just raised a whole lot of coin, Justin, to go uh, global into the have, U- yeah. UK and Germany. Um, yep. That sounds like a quite a challenge. What what do you got to do differently? Yeah, it is. I, I think. Um, well, and yeah, first things first, we have to develop those customer personas, understand ah. that market. So, um, you know, it's it's not the same as in Australia. We need to make sure that uh, we truly understand why people would want to use our service, uh, mm-hmm. how they would use it, um, and then you know how can our platform. Uh, be built out to support those customers in those regions. Yeah, love it. Mate, that's exciting. You're moving pretty quickly. Like, we are. You, you went for a walk in November 2014 with the missus, <laughs> and uh, where are we at? March 2017, and you're heading for global domination. Yeah, it's extraordinary, really. But, I, but, I, uh, I suppose great. there is some competitive pressure now that you have identified the idea and taken it to market that really it's in, incumbent upon you then to get into all the other markets before someone else does? Yeah, look, and I think that, you know, we do have we do have some competitors in every market, really, uh, but I, I don't see a problem with that because, in, in my opinion, uh, competitors just make you do business better um, and you're not actually going out there and trying to educate the market on a new product altogether. Um, so, you know, you've got um, the ability to... You don't want to be the person that has uh, amazingly unique um, first-to-market business that mm-hmm. no-one's ever heard of before, that concept, Yeah, because a lot of those businesses fail, to be honest with you. Totally agree. Um, you know, you, you want to be around the edge of, yep, I get the concept, I get Airbnb, I get sharing, um, why don't I do it with my camper then? What's your favourite camper? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I love the, uh, the a pop top because you now it's small, it's fairly light. You can get out there and um, go to some really cool places and do some free camping. Yep. Um, but then I also love the the Winnebago. Um, oh, yeah. They're, they're they're pretty awesome. Ha- have those. you seen the Winnebago Man documentary? No. I haven't. Oh, Justin. One of the funnier, I'll finish with this, but it, way back in the 50s or 60s when Winnebago was huge, they had a guy in all their TV ads called the Winnebago Man, right? Okay. And he was their presenter, a bit of a sort of Marlboro Man type fellow. Yeah, yeah. And after, he was a bit of a prima donna on set. And after the director called, you know, cut, you know, after the filming had finished, the camera, the camera guy often left the camera and sound rolling. And the Winnebago uh, man had a pretty foul mouth and got quite <laughs> abusive. And there's just all this hilarious footage of him going off at the bloody teleprompter bloke and this and that. Anyway, uh, it's this footage has been uncovered years later, but the Winnebago man has gone missing, so they track him down. And uh, it is, right, it's okay. hilarious, mate. So I'll, uh, I'll let you go. That sounds like my weekend sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, Justin, mate, well done on Camplify. It's an idea that is absolutely right for its time, and, and I wish you all the best. Yeah, thanks for having me. There you go, team. Camplify's Justin Hales. Good bloke, hey? Good insights. Now you can go and hire a van or RV over at camplify.com. I've actually always wanted to do my show out of an RV. I think that'd be really cool. Hey, coming up, I share my top three attention grabbers from that fireside chat with Justin. Plus, I've got another low-cost marketing idea for you. But first, here's a little something for you to create more freedom in your business. Support for this show comes from a very in-tune cornerstone. 
an Aussie-owned, family-run offshoring business based in the Philippines. Not only is Cornerstone in tune with the pain points shared by many Aussie business owners, they also have some very in-tune employees. You see, I recently asked a few of them, what's their go-to karaoke song and would they sing it? (laughs) Here's what they said. Actually, here's what they sung. You are the one who makes me happy. Dangerous making the most of it done. Casual goodbyes by the chill in your embrace. The expression on your face. Touch me, tease me, until I can't deny this love and feeling. Cornerstone, where your offshoring experience can hit new heights. To see how you can benefit from offshoring, book a free no-obligation feasibility assessment now at cornerstonebusinesssolutions.com.au or give them a call on 02-9083-6689 and tell them Tibbo sent you. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Ah, that ad does put a smile on my dial. Hey, my top three attention grabbers, thanks to 52ways.biz, that's the numbers 52, which is a fantastic one-day business building event hosted by Dale Beaumont and Cornerstone for all your offshoring needs. Attention grabber number one, get crystal clear on your customer personas. And you can have more than one, by the way. This is invaluable work that not enough business owners do. Justin posed some great questions in that interview that you should be answering. Plus, there is an entire thread inside the Small Business Big Marketing Forum detailing another 11 questions to help you get maximum clarity on your customer personas. Attention grabber number two, create marketing automation funnels. Now, while this sounds a little scary and a little complicated and a little nerdy, there's plenty of software out there that makes it easy. Justin mentioned Autopilot. I use Active Campaign. I'll drop links in the show notes to both. And attention grabber number three, I love how Justin said, competition makes you a better business, quote, unquote. I hear this a lot from successful business owners, and I also subscribe to it myself. You know, podcasting has become super competitive in the past 12 months with some really big names entering the space. All that's done is motivate me to constantly improve the content I share and improve on my production values. They're the three things that grab my attention in my little chat with Justin. Now, you've been a little bit quiet in the show notes recently, so I'd love to know what you learnt or thought from that chat. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 358 and let me know. What have you got to lose? All righty doodly, it is time for one simple yet effective marketing idea that you can implement immediately. It's not going to cost you a fortune, and it might just generate you more awareness, inquiry, and sales. (laughs) Gotta love that. I call today's idea the FOMO conversion hack. Now, FOMO is all about scarcity, right? It stands for the fear of missing out. It's why you can't help but check your Facebook status or email every 10 minutes. (laughs) or one minute. FOMO is that uneasy feeling you get when you feel like you might be missing out on something that everyone else is doing. As a business owner, you can use FOMO as a tactic for boosting conversions and motivating your prospects into action. So here's my three steps to creating that anxious, butterfly feeling in your prospect's stomachs. Step one, think about how you can create the perception of urgency and scarcity in relation to one or all of your offerings. Step two, once you've decided on your campaign, create some visual graphics to use on your website, in social media, in your advertising, in store, even in your email marketing campaigns. Step three, start promoting your FOMO campaign everywhere across all your touch points. And here's the pro tip, be honest. Whatever you're creating scarcity around, be sure that it really is scarce. You can head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 358 where you'll find some additional resources to help you instill fear into those around you, including a cool countdown timer for your emails. And if you'd like help implementing 
any of the ideas that I share in this segment, and there's been 23 so far, go ahead and join the Small Business Big Marketing Club over at crankmymarketing.com, where I'll personally support you daily, yeah, daily, on your marketing journey. So, what have you got to lose? Well, team, that just about wraps up another episode of the Small Business Big Marketing Show. But don't fret, everything's going to be okay. There is plenty of marketing gold coming your way in the weeks ahead, including a chat with another ex-soldier. But boy, oh boy, this is just it's a bit of a life-changing chat, I've got to say. And I also have a chat with the founder of Messina, Australia's best gelato outlet. Some very cool stuff coming up. Hey, do you remember that chat I had with celebrity personal trainer Michelle Bridges a year ago? She had some very in-your-face advice for anyone prone to the old procrastination. She called it hashtag JFDI. It works for everything. It works for putting your clothes away. It works for getting your car service. It works for having to go and talk to your bank manager. It works for getting up off the couch and going and doing some exercise. It just works for everything. It works for everything. JFDI. And, and is, it, is it really as simple as just f***ing doing it? <laughs> yeah. Is it? It really is that simple. It's like this is for all the overthinkers, all the procrastinators, everybody that suffers by analysis, by paralysis. It's just like get over it. Get up and do it. Ah, uh, you got to love a bit of JFDI. You can hear my full interview with Michelle Bridges plus hundreds more over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Well, you know what I'd really love you to do? Subscribe free on your favourite podcast catcher like iTunes. I'd also love to hear from you. Flick us an email. Say hi. Tim at timreid, R-E-I-D dot com dot A-U. Now, be sure, do yourself a favour, never stop learning, grab a free seat at Dale Beaumont's 52 Ways event that will be touring Australia and New Zealand in May, June and August this year. I'll be heading to the Melbourne one, so I'd love to see you there. Simply go to 52ways.biz and grab your seat now as they are limited. And check out Cornerstone if the idea of reducing your running costs by 70 plus percent excites the hell out of you. Or maybe you just want to come on my next Create Freedom Through Outsourcing tour in May 2017. You can find all the details about offshoring at cornerstonebusinesssolutions.com.au. If you love this show, and why wouldn't you? The Small Business Big Marketing Show has to be your favourite podcast, surely. Then let another business owner know about it. In fact, little tip grab their phone and download it for them. Until next week, I am Timbo Reid. Always have been, always will be. Thanks for tuning in. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now. 